May, the travel chaos continues, and now we're going into the big holiday weekend with so many people flying. What are we going to see? So more cancellations or delays? I'll definitely have the forecast, and we'll get into the story of getting through the airports. Also, a warning about dangerous rip currents after an alarming number of drownings in Florida. Officials there are sounding the alarm, and they really need you to know some tips before you head to the beach. And finally, I'm here in Tulare Lake. This is in California's Central Valley, a lake that was originally here, but in the late 1800s, we diverted all the water away and made it farmland, some of the most profitable farmland in our nation. And now it's underwater. So we'll talk about what the losses are and how they might just impact you coming up right here on GMA. I'm retiring. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? More than four decades after he first donned that fedora, Harrison Ford returns in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. They take into account that he's an older guy, a wearier guy, uh, someone who's been through it all. And they do put, show, put show some of the action load onto Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who I thought was a real pleasant surprise. You've taken your chances, made your mistakes. A final triumph. CNN media critic Brian Lowry says Dial of Destiny recaptures some of the magic last seen in 1989's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The third movie really was a very lovely cap to the original trilogy and revisiting it with uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was questionable to begin with and then the movie itself didn't deliver particularly well. What's he gonna do now? I don't think he plans that far ahead. The problem now is that no intellectual property is going to be left unturned. And once they were able to, to get Harrison Ford to come back and do another one, I think, you know, it, it was probably hard for them to resist the temptation to do it one more time. It's called capitalism. Of course, fans who were in their 20s for the first film are in their 60s now. The audience that saw in Raiders of the Lost Ark in theaters are generally not the demographic that rushes out to see things opening weekend. It's not so much what you believe. It's how hard you believe it. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Right now, 557 still ahead the next hour of GMSA. The summer heat putting pressure on our state's power grid. How ERCOT is handling it so far coming up. Plus, women across the country say they're feeling the pressure and are more burnt out than usual. Sarah Costa tells you how to keep yourself from burning out in a healthy way. And checking Transguide, a few flashing lights right there at 10 and ProBant. And there's I-35 at 410. We'll be back. Right now on GMSA, state lawmakers still battling over property taxes. And that's got Governor Abbott calling for another special session. Sarah Costa is here to tell us what's going on. Plus... I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington following the latest round of flight delays and cancellations impacting airports nationwide and with what one travel association is urging Congress to do to make air travel more efficient. That story ahead. And looking out there with live cam, things are pretty calm now at 76 degrees at the airport. If you're flying out, uh, now's a nice time to walk outside. But later this afternoon, eh, it's, it's going to be a different story. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, rise and shine at 6 a.m. on your Wednesday, June 28th. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope you're having a good week so far. Uh, I've been running errands in the afternoon because, you know, you, you have to. And I know a lot of people have to do that or work outside. But I accidentally kind of bumped into my car like with my arm. I was like, ah, <laughs> I'm on fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been happening a lot. You're sure. not alone in having that burning no. sensation stuff. No. You know, and that's the thing. Even if uh, temperatures come down a degree or two, humidity comes down a degree or two, the inside of the car. I mean, that's just a no-no, no matter what, as far as you know, pets or anything like that. But uh, at least it's not going to be quite the blast furnace today, like it has been the past uh, few days. Yesterday, 104. Day before that, 104. We'll be down a couple of notches. I mean, still, it's going to be hot out there, but. We're starting to see the the minor little changes as things uh, move along. 
Everybody stop. No, I'm kidding. Uh, camera's frozen out there, but we do have a couple of clouds hanging around over at 10 at 410. 76 now here in town, 74 in Bulverde. We're only two degrees above the normal low temperature right now, believe it or not, 77 at Canyon Lake. And these numbers are actually down compared to where they were yesterday. I mean, we're still have dew points in the 70s. Still, it is on really muggy side, almost oppressive, but it's not those mid, you know, 76, 77s that we had been seeing around here. So small steps in the right direction. Heat index really doesn't come into to play this morning, so it is slightly more pleasant when you step outside. Mold is on the low side. That uh, update account is going to come out later on this morning. Heat advisories are once again issued for this afternoon up till tonight, but a lot of counties have been taken out of it. Now, that doesn't mean it's not still going to be hot, but just it's not hitting that that criteria level that, you know, arbitrary number out there. So just obviously you still want to take it easy, but it will be slightly, like I said, more tolerable and temperatures will continue to drop down just a little bit. And guess what? Got some rain chances on the seven day forecast. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Well, smooth start in our 6 a.m. hour, Mike. Let's get a quick look around town. There's 10 at Hebner Road. Maybe getting a little bit busier now that folks are waking up, getting the day started early. You can see it there at 410 at Broadway. We have a lot more people out there on the roadway, so just keep that in mind as the commute does get moving. But giving you a look at the map, the big topic of the morning has obviously been a lot of the construction, but what I'm starting to see a little bit more of are stalled vehicles. We had one report near Perrin Vital at Fort along 410 earlier in the morning. It's already cleared up, but we have more popping up. Let's go ahead and take you right here into 410 westbound right at I 10, not too far from Crossroads, where we have a stalled vehicle reported early enough to where we're not seeing an impact with traffic, but just watch out for that. And a drive over here shows another stalled vehicle reported this time along I 35 southbound at Ritterman Road. So again, that does seem to be the big problem right now on the roadways, but it's not really causing a big issue for other people that are out there. Taking a quick look at travel time. It's going to be pretty pleasant along I-37 northbound. If your travels take you right into the Alamo City, 29 minutes is what you can expect. Along US-90 heading eastbound from Castroville, a 30-minute commute. And along I-35 northbound heading in from Lytle should be about a 17-minute drive time or so. But nothing too bad there and nothing too bad along these transguide cameras. Again, 90 at Military. We are seeing just some quiet roadways. Other spots of town are picking up, but I'll keep a close eye on things and have an update on other closures coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Texas lawmakers will take another swing at property taxes. Governor Abbott has called the legislature back to Austin for a second special session. And our Sarah Costa is here to show us what's on the agenda this time. Good morning. Good morning, Steph and Mark. It's all about property taxes. And that first 30 day special session of 2023 ended quiet, quietly Tuesday with no laws made and the Texas House and Senate still deadlocked on the best approach to property tax cuts. So the Texas Tribune reports House lawmakers will return at 11 a.m. today. The Texas House has been adjourned since May 30th. The House passed bills on property taxes and border security, then left. The Senate passed its own versions, but without the House in session, nothing made it to the governor's desk. So Governor Greg Abbott supports the House's property tax plan, which has since put him at odds with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. The House version would send more money to school districts to lower property taxes compared to the Senate version, which would focus more of that money set aside for property taxes on increasing the homestead exemption. Governor Abbott says he will call additional special sessions on property taxes until a deal reaches his desk. The governor also recently vetoed a number of bills from the regular session, citing the importance of passing legislation on property taxes first. Mark, Steph. Top of your morning headlines, more frustration at airports across the country. Travelers are waking up to news of flight cancellations and thousands of delays. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, one major airline is blaming the feds for the delays. Severe weather stalling summer travel across the U.S. It's not raining at home and it's not raining here, so I'm just confused why planes are not flying. Thunderstorm threats grounding flights in the Northeast with more than 2,000 cancellations and 7,000 delays yesterday alone. At New Jersey's Newark Airport, turmoil in the terminal. This man says he was transferred to a flight leaving next week. Now they're giving us a flight to, for the 2nd of July. I can't wait until July the 2nd. I mean, yeah, it's like seven days, six days from now. It's yeah, ridiculous. 
A chain reaction felt all the way in Colorado at the Denver airport. It looks like an apocalypse. It really does. Everybody, you know, is just sprawled out on the floor. While the FAA is faulting the weather for air travel disruptions, United Airlines CEO Scott Kirby is blaming the agency itself for delays at its Newark hub, telling employees... The FAA reduced the arrival rates by 40% and the departure rates by 75%. And calling weather something that the FAA has historically been able to manage. The FAA firing back, saying, We will always collaborate with anyone seriously willing to join us to solve a problem. The back and forth comes as the FAA struggles with staffing, especially for air traffic controllers. There's only so much they can do, though. They can't snap their fingers and create new air traffic controllers. It's just not that easy. With TSA expected to screen more than 2.8 million Americans alone Friday, the U.S. Travel Association is pressing Congress to quickly finalize funding for the FAA to hire more staff and to make the nation's air travel system more efficient and secure. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. A rough year in the air. Meanwhile, Texas roads suffering with as we deal with the summer heat. TxDOT even says some roads are buckling to the extreme temperatures like this one over in Houston. Crews spent last night repairing this entrance ramp to the interstate. Temps in the city were peaking around 100 degrees. It's been even hotter in other parts of the Lone Star State. Back here at home, a San Antonio man who survived his own submersible trip to the Titanic isn't sure he would have taken his chances boarding the Titan. Now, Don Morley is a retired Air Force engineer and pilot and is a member of an elite group dedicated to pushing scientific boundaries around the globe. Morley's trip to the Titanic's wreckage happened back in 2000. Now, before he agreed to dive down, he did his own research on the vessel he would go on the expedition, but the retired colonel did have a nervous moment, though, shortly after descending when he noticed water dripping inside the sub. If it does start to leak or, you know, you get an implosion, what happens, you know, the pressure builds up extremely quick and the temperature goes skyrocks, you know, 1,000, 10,000 degrees, who knows. But um, you actually incinerate before then the water washes your ashes away. Now, two passengers inside the Titan sub were part of the Explorer group with Morley. He said they knew how dangerous the trip would be and wanted nothing more than to go where few people had gone before. 609, 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Meta is rolling out new parental controls for Instagram and Facebook. How it works for you and your kids. And after the break, the cost of your 4th of July cookout will cost a little less this year. We'll look at why and how much money you could save. And looking out there with live cam at the airport, much more tolerable this morning at 76 degrees. Uh, it'll be a good idea to hop in your car now instead of later this afternoon. Just don't touch your car. Steve. No, no, not at all. <laughs> we'll be right back. And welcome back at 613. So this morning, Instagram and Facebook Messenger now have more parental control tools. They allow parents to supervise their teens on the apps, letting them see how much time their child spends on Messenger and who they're interacting with. However, parents cannot see the messages their kids are sending. Your Independence Day cookout is going to be a little more affordable than it was last year. A survey from the American Farm Bureau Federation says families can expect to pay $67.73 for a 10-person cookout. That's down 3% from last year's record high. Hamburger buns, beef, and potato salad were up in price this year, while chicken breast, lemonade, and chocolate chip cookies saw price drops. This year's average is still the second highest on record. And this is fun. As the summer heats up, Starbucks customers can now order frozen versions of the chain's refresher drinks. Flavors include pineapple passion, fruit and mango dragon fruit. Their ingredients include puree, fruit, and lemonade. So it's like a snow cone or a raspa, right? Customers can also customize the drinks as well. And they almost match those tie-dye t-shirts they I showed know, there in that pretty shot. pretty cool. <laughs> right now on KSAT.com, Whataburger fans can look forward to the return of three fan favorites and one new menu item this summer. They're bringing back the jalapeno cheddar biscuit. Tried one again yesterday. <gasps> the Southern Bacon Double and Ooh. the Banana Pudding Shake. That's a BLT, by the way. Uh, Whataburger also adding the BLT. Oh, this one is. <clears throat> Including all the nice. makings of the sandwich classic on top of Texas toast. 
all items will be available for a limited time. We don't mind sampling Whataburger. No. Hint, 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 hint. Not, not at all. So you had one yesterday. You talked about it, and you, you made it happen, huh? I did. Well, I, <laughs> I had forgot that they went away, and every time I went to order, they go, sir, we don't have that anymore. Aww. So uh, it was a it was a nice reunion yesterday. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Good. Did you get the, the, the jalapeno cheddar, cheddar biscuit oh. with sausage, egg, and cheese. That mm -hmm. sounds delicious. It was a good day. Yeah. Well, let's check in with Stephen to see if you know the roads are clear, so you can get your own cheddar. I hope so, because that biscuit. sounds like it should be on my agenda today. Are you a BLT fan? Uh, a little bit, a little you bit. know, hold the lettuce a little bit more on the bacon. There you yeah, go. I, 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 Got you, because the picture of that looked really good, It too. did look yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I'm, yeah, now I can't stop thinking about anything else but food. <laughs> but I'll try to get through it, because we have some traffic here at 410 at Ingram North and there at 410 at McCullough. And none of it is really too concerning. In fact, our morning has been off to a pretty good start. You're seeing a little bit more activity out on the roadways, as always, as we get closer to morning rush. But uh, it just seems like we have some of the same issues still presented. A stall vehicle along 410 westbound at I-10. It's not causing issues. But again, we still have this one also reported at I-35 southbound at Riddiman Road. Just check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. And if you see the flashing lights, I'd like to say it and mention it again. Move over or slow down. That is the law. Quick reminder, lots of construction taking place and along here along State Highway 16, Bandera Road, sidewalk and curb construction. Now, this has been current for quite a while, but we're going to see it pop uh, finished up around Friday, June 30th. Hopefully that work will wrap around 3 in the afternoon. In the meantime, we'll see single lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Circle A. I know it's a lot of information for you to read, so just scan the QR code. It takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures on our website. There is a lot happening outside of Loop 1604, as I mentioned earlier, so just know what to expect ahead of time. And if you're heading to go grab your breakfast, whatever, nothing should slow you down. Good. Swing by here. We'll run out to the meet you in St. Mary's. That's fair. You're going to drop. So anyway, you know, BLT, uh -huh. combine that with an egg sandwich. Fried egg Ooh. on the BLT with a slice of cheese in there. Oh, my God. With the tomato, with the mayo, with all that with the stuff. Lettuce. Yeah, and just stick the... I'm in. Uh, yeah. 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 That sounds I mean, perfect. And, and, at 617, sure. Yeah, and the white bread just got to be barely toasted. Can you imagine waking just, up just at kinda, Mike's house in the morning? Just kind of show it the toaster. <laughs> I mean, just a hint of a toast on it's it. It's amazing. So. Will you make this for all yeah, of us? Yeah, I feel like you can make it. Do you have an apron? Do you wear an apron in the kitchen? Do you no. own a bed and breakfast? No. We would like to, uh, to, to if you decide yeah. to open it. Yeah, I have weather right now, so vibe. you guys are going to have to. Oh, look at this guy. I, I, you know, I can't imagine that that concrete walk is too cool right now, yeah, but. remember what that's called, Mike. It's right there on the caption. Splooting. Yes. Yes. Splooting. That's just fun to say. I know. And just seeing the, the <laughs> poor little squirrel. Poor little guy. You've got to kind of feel bad for that guy. Yeah, but again, I can't imagine that concrete's too, uh, too awfully cool out there. All right, here is Climate Prediction Center. And once again, it is still leaning in the direction of slightly better than 50 50 chances of seeing above normal precipitation uh, through starting with July 4th through the 10th, which obviously is good news. Now, in that same time period, we are still. It's wanting to lean toward the warmer side of normal, which right now, again, normal is 93 degrees. We'll continue to go up, obviously, the, the warmest time of the year. Normal high temperature is 97. That's in the first couple of weeks of August. Now, going into a little bit further beyond that, 8 to 14 days, still slightly better chances of seeing some uh, precipitation around here. But again, staying on the warm side, even through just about the first half of July around here. The reason for it, well, the reason for that, the heat that we've been having that high, again, we've been talking about this thing, which has been sitting on top of us. And again, it's been like a lid, a dome on, on the atmosphere. Won't let anything develop as far as any rain chances. But this is now starting to, actually, we're seeing signs of it sliding off to the east. We're starting to get that mixing in the afternoon. So that drops the humidity down somewhat. So it was slightly more tolerable yesterday, even though we hit 104 just like the previous day. And then we'll be a little bit lower today. Then we go into the Sunday and the first part of the week and with that high way off there to the east of us that again allows or gives us the opportunity to see a couple of showers try and pop up. We do have some clouds hanging around here as of right now. 76 normal low 74 right in the ballpark of where we should be and jump ahead to some of those uh, slight rain chances. This is going to be into Sunday. And again, this is not going to be a huge rain event by any stretch, but at least there will be a couple of them out there, not only on Sunday, but I think a slightly better shot at a stray shower to Monday as well as going on into uh, Tuesday.
perhaps even Wednesday. Today, 102, still going to be hot. Humidity will drop somewhat in the afternoon, so a bit more tolerable, especially in the shade. 100s tomorrow, th Friday, Saturday, 99 Sunday. I'm going for, I'm on kind of a little bit going on in there. 97 on Monday and Tuesday with a few extra clouds around here. And again, a shower or two. Obviously, that number is still um, three degrees, roughly about the normal high temperature then, but a whole lot better than, you know, where we have been. Yeah. Seven degrees lower than what it was yesterday. Yeah. That's nice. We approve. Thank you. We approve, Mike. Okay, thank you. 620, 76 degrees. And mosquitoes are always a concern outside, especially after reported cases of malaria. What you need to know and the symptoms to look out for. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I feel free to bare my skin, thanks to Sky Rizzy. Sky Rizzy, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. In another study, most people had 90% clearer skin even at five years. And Sky Rizzy is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Thanks to clearer skin with Sky Rizzy, this is my moment. There's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. Now's the time. Ask your doctor about Sky Rizzy, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Welcome back. In your morning medical news is something we've been talking about quite a bit lately, mosquitoes. And now there are new concerns rising after reported cases of malaria. Here is case at intern Allison Hill with the latest on what you need to know and the symptoms to look out for. The CDC is warning those in southern states to take extra precautions against mosquitoes this summer as cases of malaria begin to spread. One of the five cases is here in Texas, the first time in nearly two decades. The four other cases were found in Florida. The disease comes from a parasite spread by mosquitoes and it can leave warning signs like fever, chills and flu like symptoms. If you experience any of those, you should seek medical help right away. About 2,000 cases of malaria are diagnosed each year in the U.S. We have more information about the warning signs and treatments on our website. Just head to ksat.com. For GMSA, I'm Allison Hill. Time now, 625 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead at 630, the summer heat putting pressure on the state's power grid. Sarah Costa tells us how ERCOT is handling things so far. And over half of all women say their finances have worsened in recent years and they're more burnt out than usual. How you can keep yourself from burning out. Let's roll the dice and see which camera is pulled up. There's 410 at McCullough on your Wednesday morning commute. So far so good right now on these scan of cameras around town. We'll be right back. Right now, GMSA City Crews across San Antonio looking to crack down on a messy problem. What they're doing to catch people illegally dumping trash. Plus, this incident should never have happened. This woman should not have died. After a deadly shooting last week involving three former police officers, experts say a community investment into mental health could be the difference between life and death. And we made it to midweek outside with live cam. Some morning clouds. Temperatures have dropped down to near 75 degrees. Small victories. And Mike is still hopeful about our extended forecast. Hi, good morning. It is 6.30. It is Wednesday. We made it to Wednesday, June 28th. And I'm glad about those clouds this morning. That'll help out a lot. It starts out nice now, but I'm sure we're due for another rapid warm-up. Mike, I heard one of the hottest temperatures in the country yesterday was in Roswell, New Mexico at 112 degrees. Ugh. Yeah. And it was Del Rio that hit another record. I believe it's 10 days in a row that they've hit record high temperatures. We are, though, starting to see things change ever so slightly. So this, you know, this, this pattern that's just been plaguing us for the past couple of weeks is finally starting to 
to shift around here. We have our morning clouds hanging around and we have temperatures that are now down to 76 degrees at the airport, just two above normal dew point 72. Now in itself, that's still very high, but it's a lot better than where it has been even going back to last week and the week before that when we had those just outrageously high dew points. Therefore, the outrageously high humidity around here. Temperature 73 Port SA 77 Castroville. We do not have any 80s on this graphic right now, so that's a small step in the right direction. Mold is on the low side. Updated count comes out about an hour or so. We still have heat advisories, but also take note that it's not just covering the entire area. So a lot of counties have been taken away from this, and it's just because the temperature, the heat index doesn't hit that, that threshold number that gets assigned. So it's still going to be very high. You still want to take it easy, all the, the necessary precautions, but that's kind of an encouraging graphic as well. Slightly more pleasant when you step outside this morning, even compared to yesterday. The humidity is down just a bit and 102 today. Still very hot, not 104 like the past couple of days, and we are seeing that lower humidity come in here in the afternoon, so it's a bit more tolerable than going through Saturday, 100 degrees. So again, down another couple of notches here and there, and that lower uh, afternoon humidity going into next week, then upper 90s. Yep, and you're reading that right. A shower or two in the forecast. Talk all about that and take a look, a uh, closer look ahead to the 4th of July. It's next Tuesday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority haven't had a lot to talk about. Not today, but uh, that just changed, Mike. Oh, Unfortunately, something popped up. It always happens around this time, guys. Uh, while the cream here on Transcat is showing things are moving smoothly for a lot of drivers, uh, can't say the same here along I-10 westbound at Woodlake Parkway. In a few minutes, I'll step out of the studio to talk to our friends at Transguide, but I am seeing some flashing lights out there. We do have a crash reported in the westbound lanes. There are uh, not indication, no indication, I should say, of congestion building up just yet based off what I'm seeing behind me on our map. Lots of green still if you're heading into the Alamo City from Seguin, but be on the lookout. Again, we'll get our, on the phone with our friends at Transguide, find out exactly what uh, they can show us out there, but right now, just be on the lookout for that. We take a drive back in here to town. A stall reported at 281 Southbound at I-35. It's not causing issues for drivers, but we've seen a lot of those stalled vehicles reported. It's another one still being uh, lingering around here at 410 Westbound at I-10. Wide look now at our map. We're really going to start to see a lot more of that congestion creep in as we usually do around this time. Most of it will start along US 90. So if you're heading in from Castroville, now would be the best time to do it. Taking a look though at 35, if you're heading in from Live Oak, a little bit of congestion is building up out there as well, but none of it is too concerning. But I'm going to have to get on the phone with their friends at Transcat, as I mentioned earlier. I'm taking a look behind me. I don't see that shot up here just yet, but we'll see if they can show us the conditions and we'll keep you posted on that uh, as information does become available. Mark. New this morning, a driver badly hurt following a crash on San Antonio's northwest side overnight. It happened around 1.30 this morning on Loop 1604 West, not far from Holotus. Police say the driver lost control of his small SUV on the exit ramp to Bandera Road. The driver rolled the vehicle several times and was trapped inside until being rescued by firefighters. He was taken to a hospital in critical condition. Several people are without a place to stay this morning after a massive apartment fire in Leon Valley. This happened at the Vista del Rey apartments around 530 yesterday. Now, fire officials tell us that it started on the lower level but quickly spread to the rest of the building. 12 units caught fire and the entire building is a total loss. Nobody was hurt and the Red Cross is helping everyone affected by the fire. Mike's forecast has indicated another week of scorching triple digit temperatures and ERCOT continues its weather watch through Friday. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio to show us the latest numbers from ERCOT. Now, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. And we all know it's hot and it's putting a bit of demand on our grid system. So ERCOT could set a new record for demand today. Forecast shows it could hit 82,197 megawatts. The weather watch issued last week said the record was 80,148 megawatts. That was set last year in July. However, yesterday, we definitely topped that at 4.50 p.m. at 81,017 megawatts. An ERCOT weather watch is an advanced notification of forecasted significant weather with high demand. Grid conditions are expected to be normal today, but due to forecasted conditions, operating reserves may be lower. So you can do your part by planning ahead and reducing your energy during those higher demand periods. And like Mike has said earlier, CPS Energy has flagged today 
as a yellow day, which encourages energy conservation between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. So CPS Energy says that means customers should raise thermostats if safe to do so up to 78 degrees, charge electric vehicles at night, and avoid using large appliances like washers and dryers and ovens during those times of peak energy demand. Mark, Steph. One other news this morning, a year after 53 migrants were found dead inside a tractor trailer here in San Antonio, U.S. attorneys say they've arrested four men who played a part in the tragedy. The indictment says four Mexican nationals were arrested yesterday in different parts of the state, alleging they helped smuggle adults and children from Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico into the U.S. between December 2021 and June of 2022. One woman we spoke with was at the site of the tragedy to remember her son. She says he wanted to come to the U.S. so he could give a better life to his girlfriend and child. Que él venía para acá para para trabajar porque tenía su su novia. Pablo wanted to come to a better life for him and his girlfriend, so he can have his little baby a future. All the suspects arrested are facing several charges, including conspiracy and transportation of illegal immigrants, resulting in death. All four could spend the rest of their lives behind bars if convicted. New details in a story that we have been following closely, the deadly shooting of Melissa Bettas by three San Antonio police officers. Dan Packer, the attorney representing her family, says that Bettas was diagnosed as schizophrenic and taking medicine. Now the director of the National Alliance on Mental Illness is calling for action, all in hopes of preventing this from happening again. We find that having a supportive community environment, a supportive family, is one of the biggest helps towards for a person dealing with a mental illness. Everybody is susceptible to a mental health issue at one point or another in their life. Now he is demanding a deeper look at the San Antonio police officer's policy on mental health calls. However, he is also asking that people speak up before a crisis like this one occurs. And we have more information on our website at kset.com. And this morning, a new effort to crack down on illegal dumping all over San Antonio. City crews picked up near 2,400 tons of illegally dumped trash and waste last year. This is home security video of illegal dumping in the Copper Branch neighborhood. Residents tell us they've seen couches, bedroom sets, basketball goals, and appliances dumped behind their homes. It's issues like these that have solid waste management and SAPD teaming up to catch the people responsible. Extremely excited because this is exactly what we wanted. We needed to catch someone. We needed to publicize that we did, that we are doing this. We needed to reconfirm with everyone there are consequences. Solid Waste Management recommends people call City Services at 311 so reports on certain locations start to add up. That way they continue to identify those problem spots. Time now, 638 and 76 degrees for now. Here's what's coming up next on GMSA. With all the things we have to deal with every day, it's almost impossible to avoid getting stressed. Women are especially feeling the pressure. We're coming up on GMSA. Ladies, we're talking to you with some ways to avoid burnout. Hi, welcome back at 642. So burnout, money issues, family problems, women are struggling, and a new survey suggests that it's only getting worse. Sarah Costa joined us now here in studio with some things you can do to ease that stress. Good morning, Sarah. Good, Good morning. morning. Sorry, Mark. Steph, <laughs> you feel that pressure. I mean, as a mother, um, you know, as a working mom, you know, we're expected, women are expected to be the best mom, also to look good while doing it, and also to do well at work. And I know women are feeling that pressure. And like that survey said, a lot of them are feeling burnt out. So here are some tips on dealing with burnout. Being the primary caregivers, having to school their kids from home, often reducing work hours more than men. Women are taking on the majority of the work at home, even if they have a full-time job. And now a new survey from Gender on the Ballot reveals that 60% of women feel more burnt out than usual. That number jumps to 70% for moms with young kids. Also, a study from the University of Montreal found that women are more prone to burnout than men because women were less likely to be promoted and in turn get less pay. So how can you ease the burnout? Awareness is the first step. You love to cook and all of a sudden you're ordering takeout every day. You like to exercise and all of a sudden you just like 
don't have it in you to exercise as much. Like those are earlier signs that someone might be struggling. Then get support. Finding support, so peer support, or even a supportive supervisor can make a really big difference. And make your mental and physical health a priority with healthy eating, exercising, getting a good sleep routine, and actually using your vacation time. 55% of vacation days went unused in 2022. Often we need at least a little vacation to sort of restart. Well, also, if you work from home, it would be a good idea to have a separate room for work so that you can actually leave work somewhere when you are done for the day. I liked the tip of using vacation time. It's true. I noticed last year, I was like, oh my God, I had like seven, eight days I didn't use. And this mm -hmm. year, I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> I'm using use all, all the vacation time. Yeah, that, that happens to me as well, because um, yeah, it comes to Christmas I hate time. Oh, to yeah, you too. okay. There, you go. there we go. There you go. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. We do. But yeah, nobody should leave that vacation on the table, no. right? No. Yeah. We should and take it. Good to see you back from vacation. And speaking of vacation, <laughs> <laughs> let's check in with Stephen Cavazos, who is not on vacation today. No, but I will be off Friday and Monday, but it's because I'm moving. So it's not oh, really a yeah, vacation. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Thank All right, you. guys, let's get a look here at 10 at Woodlake Parkway. I did mention this a little bit earlier in the morning. Flashing lights. Uh, this is a shot our friends at Transguide were able to get us of the crash reported in the westbound lanes. If you're heading in from Seguin, this could impact your commute to the downtown area, but uh, it really just seen traffic move through there without any trouble from this Transguide camera. But you have to watch out for the first responders. Again, this is in the far left shoulder lane, as you can see it behind. A little bit of a pixelated shot there, but this is the best shot we're probably going to get. Take a look there at your map. Just be on the lookout if you're heading westbound along I-10. Taking a drive back into town. Again, stalls just seem to be the big issue right now. This one's still reported at 281 southbound at I-35. It's not causing issues, but as we give you a wide look at the map now, you're going to start to see a lot more of the red and yellow that's popping up slowly but surely along I-35. If you're heading in from Live Oak, I see a little bit along 410 uh, near the I-35 interchange there as well. But other than that, uh, we do want to keep an eye on this crash. It's really been the only main issue that has, been, uh, that has popped up on the roadways. But just watch out for the first responders. Again, far left shoulder lane is where they are placed at. Just be on the lookout if your commute does take you through I-10 westbound heading into the downtown area. We wish you all the best with the, the big the big part of the move. Yes, it's yeah. tomorrow. So uh, I'll be today is just going over the paint, which is fun. Right. And then tomorrow it will be I know this is how I paint. This how I paint. But uh, and then tomorrow the movers will come and all the big stuff. So it's been a month and I know I've been griping about it. So thank you guys for hearing me gripe. And yeah, remember understandable. The, the college trick toothpaste in the, you know, holes. I in the oh, holes. No. Yeah. My mom will tell you a funny story one day oh, goodness. about toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. Okay. Leave it hanging. <laughs> All right. I know. I can't wait. When was the last time you went tubing? Uh, I am oh. I it 12 years ago. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't like been a couple of years. This guy's having a great time there. Yeah, got and, the doggles going. Yep. And don't forget, my. I know my eye doctor <laughs> always uh, advised me, always wear UV protected <laughs> sunglasses. So, because, <laughs> okay. I mean, that can do a lot of damage to your eyes. So, always remember that. But, yeah, that looks like a lot of fun out there. He's having a good time. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, a couple of clouds still hanging around here this morning, and that just helps to kind of delay the, the start of the big warming process. We've dropped down to 76 now in town, normal low 74, so in the ballpark, and there are no 80s on the map for the first time in seems like forever, even at this time of the morning. 81 at uh, 8 o'clock, 84 at noon or excuse me 84 later on this morning pardon me 92 at noon and then we are going to make it up to 102 later on today now obviously still very hot nine degrees above normal but we will have lower humidity in the afternoon so we're not going to have those outrageously high heat index values and also we are going to be down a couple of notches from yesterday so the peak obviously was uh, yesterday as well as on monday at the 104 that was the peak this week and then temperatures will continue to slowly go downward nothing really showing up on the satellite picture as of right now Other, obviously we have those low clouds out there and you got to kind of uh, step back and look at the big picture and it just color this in this big, huge circle going around us. There's a sort of a wheel, if you will, that high, which is uh, sitting on top of us, and it has started to slide off to the east a little bit more. So it's not right 
smack in the middle of us. And that's why temperatures are dropping down ever so slightly. And also as it slides on out of here, we do then get some of the mixing in the afternoons, we say. So it gets helps to get rid of some of that humidity around here. Uh, big storm system, that's the one causing all the delays off to the northeast. And another big one coming through uh, Chicago. Some of the bigger hubs, Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit. So watch out if you have any uh, travel plans later on today with that. And jump ahead to the weekend. A couple of clouds in the morning, obviously, on Saturday. And then Sunday, we start to see maybe one or two uh, scattered showers around the area. Now, this tends to paint things in with a broad brush, so it's not going to be everywhere, but those rain chances will exist going into or as we get into the uh, the first part of next week, which is fantastic news. 102 today, 100 the next couple of days. Then we are going to be in the upper 90s Sunday, Monday, as well as the 4th of July. A couple of showers here or there. Boy, that's good news. It's awesome news. Yeah, we couldn't get rid of this weather pattern soon enough. I know. No kidding. Be yeah. extra careful with those fireworks, folks. Because uh, yes. it's been pretty dry lately. Yeah, good yes. reminder. 649, 76 degrees. And coming up, does complaining make things worse or can it lead to changes at work? Tomorrow on GMSA, how you can approach and get the best results. Let's go outside with live cam one more time as we wrap up the morning show on your hump day Wednesday. We'll talk to Steve one more time coming up. Coming up here on GMA, the travel chaos continues. And now we're going into the big holiday weekend with so many people flying. What are we going to see? So more cancellations or delays? I'll definitely have the forecast and we'll get into the story of getting through the airports. Also, a warning about dangerous rip currents after an alarming number of drownings in Florida. Officials there are sounding the alarm and they really need you to know some tips before you head to the beach. And finally, I'm here in Tulare Lake. This is in California's Central Valley, a lake that was originally here, but in the late 1800s, we diverted all the water away and made it farmland, some of the most profitable farmland in our nation. And now it's underwater. So we'll talk about what the losses are and how they might just impact you coming up right here on GMA. And we have some exciting news about science with Sarah. Sarah Spivey and her assistant David Sears are now teaming up with the San Antonio Zoo to bring you more fun science experiments. Partnership starts later this morning on GMSA at 9. Sarah and David will be live out at the zoo with uh, Science with Sarah. And their experiment will be all about how an animal's blubber or fat can keep them warm in cold temperatures. But not this time of year. So tune in for that and maybe some special guests as well. Before we go, many of us strive to live a healthier lifestyle, right? That's right, but one local woman is not just living that life, but competing for the title of Muscle and Fitness, Hers Magazine, Miss Health and Fitness. Shannon Hernandez is currently a semi-finalist to win the award and the cover of the magazine. Hernandez says that she's always motivated by a good competition, but what sold her on this one is that it's also a fundraiser for homes for wounded warriors. It's important to me to really show that fit and healthy looks different on everybody. Everybody is different. And so, you know, yeah, 45 year old uh, mom of two and uh, to really show that off. Awesome. We wish you the best. Adanda says she is currently the healthiest she has ever been and still gets to indulge in her favorite breakfast tacos, of course. Now voting for her is free, but you can donate with each vote. So far, she has raised a little less than $8,000 for Homes for Wounded Warriors. So the next round of voting ends tonight at 9 p.m. Right now, it's five minutes till seven. Let's go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos. You go, Shannon. All right, looks like uh, we're taking a look at some of the wrap-up here of a crash reported along I-10 westbound at Woodlake Parkway. You can see it off in the shoulder lane. Uh, looks like first responders are getting ready to clear that up, but I'm not seeing so much of an impact with traffic, at least just yet, as they take you in along I-10. You can see still plenty of green, but a lot of the congestion is starting to pop up in the metropolitan area. Quick look at the travel times if you're heading in from Seguin. Should still be about a 30-minute commute, 33 if you're heading along 87 northbound, traveling in from Lavernia, and for our friends in Floresville, should be about a 30 minute commute. But uh, overall, Mike, I've had a pretty easy day. How's it going? Yeah, that's always great when it's uh, easy in your department over there. We've got some clouds hanging around this morning and we have temperatures that are 
actually not that far from normal. We haven't said that in a long time. Mid 70s right now. Humidity's okay. Heat advisory for our southeastern counties. Now, just because there's not a heat advisory where you live, obviously you got to be careful. Use this, the hot, you know, summer precautions out there. 102 high temperatures today. So down a little bit from yesterday. Humidity will be lower in the afternoon. Temperatures drop another couple of degrees the next few days. Upper 90s next week and a rain chance in the forecast. Hallelujah. You bring us good news. You made my day, Mike. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for joining yeah. us today. Have a great day. See you back here at night.